Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens, I'm in Fukuoka. On the island of Kyushu in southern Japan, and this is one of the capitals of ramen and of noodles in all of Japan. Today, I'm going to take you on a noodles tour of Fukuoka. We're going to be eating iconic tonkotsu ramen, which was invented right here in Fukuoka. We're going to be eating udon, which is extremely popular locally. And then finally, we're going to eat a dish called champon. It's going to be an amazing day of noodles in Fukuoka. You're not going to want to miss any of the noodle action, and it's all coming up for you right now in this video. Good morning from Fukuoka. Again, this is one of the great noodle destinations in all of Japan. And we're beginning with one of the giants of Japanese noodles, Hakata Ramen, which is also known throughout the world as Tonkotsu Ramen. The signature of Tonkotsu Ramen is made with pork bones, which are boiled for hours, sometimes 15 or even 20 hours to release all of their flavor potential, all of the collagen, all of the milky broth. It's known to be extremely rich, extremely flavorful. We're gonna start with the first place. It is an absolute legendary place to eat Fukuoka style Hakata Ramen. The shop is called Haku Yuken. Even from the outside appearance, it's just so old school. And they date back to 1952. This place is so iconic. I am so incredibly excited. Konnichiwa. I love the decoration. I love the style. It's all bar counter seating and you can watch the master as he cooks the ramen and prepares the ramen with precision. And at the same time, it's so friendly. It's such a positive energy here. Uh, people come for this old style Hakata ramen. And one of the things that they're known for is their handmade, homemade noodles. And so the ramen master, he grabs the amount he really kind of like works them in his hand before boiling them, cooking for them for the perfect amount of time before then combining it with the soup and the toppings and all the other ingredients. But it's just truly something that never gets old to watch a ramen chef and master of cooking at their art. Arigatou gozaimasu. Oh, here we go. Oh, that is a gorgeous, spectacularly beautiful bowl of ramen. Oh, and the rich porkiness you can smell. The noodles, you can see how they're handmade, hand prepared to precision. I think there's four different levels of noodles that you can order from the, the doneness, whether it be more firm or less firm or softer or just the regular that the chef decides. But then it's topped with chashu, chopped, topped with uh, woodier mushrooms, some green onions, and bamboo shoots. But look at these noodles. One of the highlights here is definitely the, the noodles, which are handmade, cooked to precision. Oh, and they're also known for their kind of flat noodles flat noodles, I believe, which are different. Okay, so the first way to go about your ramen is to definitely taste that soup broth. Oh, oh look how oily and thick that is and milky. And that definitely is from the, the tonkotsu, from those bones being boiled for so long. That's what gives it the milkiness with all the secret herbs and spices. Here we go, this is my first ever bowl of tonkotsu hakata ramen in Fukuoka. Wow. Oh, that is so rich, so creamy, and so much of an intense porkiness to it. Wow. That is healing and soothing and just fills your mouth with like the juices, all juices of the pig that you can possibly imagine. All oh, that broth is stunning. Mmm. Mmm. All the noodles are incredible. Tangly, thin, fresh. Cooked to the point where they're, like this version is not so chewy, quite soft, but not like mushy whatsoever. The quality, the freshness of the noodles, all that, that stands out. And then they just sort of absorb that porky broth.
I kind of buried all the chashu and the bean and the bamboo shoots, but let's move on to the chashu. Some of those bamboo shoots and mushrooms. Mm. You've got the salty pieces of the pork belly, that chashu. Kind of has a smoky, salted overdose of flavor. And then I love those bamboo shoots, that preserved flavor to it, which boosts the flavor and contrasts the flavor in your mouth. And you've got the woodier mushrooms, which are kind of spongy, kind of a little bit rubbery on your tongue as well. What a combination, what a bowl. This is just the real deal, just an iconic bowl of ramen. Mm. Happiness. You can add some of the sesame seeds as a topping as well. So hearty, so fulfilling. And this is what you want to be eating in the wintertime. I mean, actually year round in Fukuoka, but in wintertime because it's so rich and heavy and warming. You can just feel it warming your soul all the way to your core. Wow, that was a spectacular bowl of ramen. That was iconic, that was so good. And my bowl, I got kind of the deluxe bowl with maybe extra toppings, uh, came to 1,150 yen, but such a cool place. I love the feel of it, how just, it's a preservation of the heritage of ramen. What a way to begin this Fukuoka noodle tour. And we have a lot more noodles to eat. Next up on this noodle tour in Fukuoka, we're going to eat Hakata-style udon. And from what I hear, udon might actually be the number one noodle dish for local Fukuokans. And they have a unique and special style of Hakata udon. And this restaurant is famous for their udon, but I think they might also have soba. So we're gonna go inside, we're gonna check it out, and we're gonna have udon next. Hey. The menu they have small, medium, or large amount of noodles with no extra cost. So no matter how what size you get the same, we have to get the large size bowl. It's huge, and their most popular one is said is goboten, which is udon in a soup with burdock tempura. the biggest bowl of udon I've ever seen. It's huge. Oh man, and being able to watch them as they cook, as they boil the noodles. Uh, they've already been pre-boiled in the morning, but then he just flash boils them, gets them to that perfect texture, and then combines it with that clear broth, and then also with the fish cake, a little bit of green onions, finely sliced, and then the burdock root tempura, which is just is this the classic. That is like a family-sized bowl, but for a single person of udon. Wow, I can't wait to try it in these noodles. So, I believe in Japan there's different versions of broth for udon, but in Hakata specifically, it's known as being light and thin and clear. And the tools of choice. Oh, oh man, that's so soothing though. It has like a little bit of a fishy seafood kind of flavor to it, like a dashi maybe, but it's so clean, it's salty, pure, 
so much flavor on your tongue as you taste that broth. And we have so many noodles to eat. You could almost swim in this bowl, it's so huge. Look at these noodles, they're fat, they're thick, they're hearty, and they use whole wheat, so their noodles are not pure white. They use a variety of wheat and flour for their, for their noodles, but they're like, you can see how gummy and thick they are. Here we go, first taste of the udon. Mmm, mmm. Man, those are hearty. The texture, they're gummy and soft. And they've just started to absorb that broth a little bit. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. That's really good and really really hearty and soothing. And then this one is the, the popular one served with burdock root tempura. Mmm. Oh, that's amazing. It's kind of absorbed some of that broth, so it's kind of soggy but crispy at the same time. You taste the flavor of the oil, and you taste the flavor of that burdock root. It kind of has an earthy taste to it. I mean, I don't know what else to compare it to. It's just like, Natural tasting, really good textures. Somehow it just complements those noodles and that broth so well. Let's do a little seasoning. So they have a little bit of uh, chili pepper or chili powder and then also the sancho, I think the, the Japanese pepper as well, which is really fragrant, citrusy. Okay, I've got the fish cake next. Oh yeah, it has a little bit of a sweet taste. Mm. After 2 p.m., you can refill as many times as you want, so it's really all you can eat noodles here. So, this is definitely the place to come if you're extremely hungry. Wow. Okay, I made it. I'm sweating on the inside. Um, made it to my final bite of noodles. I conquered the bowl, all the noodles. Oh man, I'm warm from the inside out now. I don't know if I can move on to the next place after that udon challenge. Really good though. Oh. Oh wow. And after that giant bowl of udon, we're just stopping by nearby. There is a temple which commemorates the master Shochi Kushi. He came back from China in 1241 and he brought the recipe for sweet bean jelly, manju, udon, and soba. This is the stone that marks his achievement. And he brought back the milling techniques from China and also introduced it to Japan here in Kyushu. Wow. I mean, udon and soba, these are two of the major staple foods of Japan. Uh, this is, this is huge. This is monumental. For our last and final noodle dish, we took a taxi ride. It was a little ways away on the other side of Fukuoka, but we are here at the last restaurant. This place is called Ide Champon, and they serve a dish which is called Champon, and we're gonna hopefully see in the kitchen when he's frying up a fresh batch, but they serve it to you. It's a lot of vegetables are included. They serve a mountain in your bowl vegetables, noodles, it's another really loved dish. Okay, so champon is a dish that includes noodles at the bottom, plus a stir fry of vegetables and meat. 
and so he started with a bunch of oil then like some bacon kind of looking meat went in then he added in a bunch of cabbage a bunch of onions a bunch of bean sprouts and he's just kind of sauteing that down until it wilts He didn't leave a spare bean sprout in that broth. He fished every last vegetable out. That is huge. Oh, that was a cool process. And after eating all you can eat udon and a bowl of ramen earlier, I'm pretty happy that this is almost 80% vegetables. His mountain building skills are quite impressive. Okay, let's try that broth first. to tell if it's porky or if it's kind of like, I think it is meaty, the broth. All the broth is thick and rich and kind of milky. The broth is really good. Let's just start from the top of the mountain. It's a, tons of bean sprouts, cabbage, onions in here. All that pork simmered down. Mmm, that's delicious. I like how there's so many different textures and yet 90% vegetables. Mmm. Oh, I like this a lot. Okay, and there's a sauce that goes along with it. This one is called the red goncho, I believe. You can smell yuzu in there. Kind of adds a little zing bite to your dish. Maybe kind of spread that out. Maybe rehydrate it with some of the soup. Yeah, that's pretty salty, so you can't eat that much of it. But I love that burst of freshness from the, the yuzu. Maybe there's some sancho pepper in there too, with a little bit of tingling, and then a little bit of spice in there, and then also a lot of salt. So it's used to kind of, I mean, you're supposed to use it kind of sparingly, and a little bit goes a long ways. There's a whole plate of seasoning here. I'll try chili. Oh yeah, a little bit of chili. Chili flakes would be good. Maybe this one is the vinegar. Maybe add a little bit of vinegar. Maybe a little bit of that chili oil. Oh. Okay, I can't wait for the noodles. Let's go. Let's dig below the mountain of vegetables. Oh, here we go. Here's the noodles. Mm. This is really a good dish. Tasty. Mm. Actually goes down quite easily. And definitely that broth is definitely pork bones, definitely pork based broth. It is very thick. I mean, it kind of does remind me of a tonkotsu. Maybe the pork bones are boiled down 
kind of has a similar richness and taste to it. It is a rich broth as well. Mm. Milky. I'm gonna be warm for days. Digesting noodles. Oh, so good. That completes the noodle tour. Oh, nice to end on some vegetables, but I need to lean back. That was a lot of noodles. If you are a noodle lover, Fukuoka is an absolute must visit destination at some point. So I'll have all three of the places that we went in the description box below. You can check out all the locations. And that completes this noodle tour of Fukuoka, really one of the capitals of noodles. I mean, they have contributed so much to Japanese food and the Japanese noodle culture right here in Fukuoka and Kyushu Island. And that's gonna wrap it up. I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you and if you're not already subscribed make sure you subscribe now and also be sure to check out all the videos in this series we're traveling around the island of Kyushu eating some amazing Japanese food I also want to say a big thank you to Kyushu tourism for arranging some of the things that we did on this trip and for helping me to set it up and that's gonna be it thanks again for watching see you on the next video